So I've been working on a React project lately that is using hooks and it has a more complex uh, state requirement for the UI. And I've noticed I've been using the use reducer hook more as opposed to the use state hook. And I found that kind of interesting because when hooks first came out, I thought I would be using the use reducer hook very rarely or maybe not at all um, and use use state more just because there was less boilerplate involved and less uh, to get it working. I thought it was just simpler to use use state. So I found it interesting that I was now starting to use use reducer more and I kind of wanted to talk about in this video why I am and where I feel like is a good situation to use use reducer over use state and kind of the rule that I've been using to differentiate the two. And now this is something I believe I first read uh, Dan Abramov uh, recommend doing or splitting uh, which hook to use. And so I've been using it and it's been working out pretty good so far. So the idea is with simple state or a state where they do not mingle with each other, use state is the way to go. So here's an example of that. What does it mean for the state to mingle with each other? So here I have a count and here I have an input field, right? So I'm keeping the state for both of those things. So here is the state for the count and I push the button to increment the count and I'm displaying the count here. And then I have an input field which I can see the first name of the user or whatever. And then when I on change, I am updating the state. And so when the count state changes, the first name state stays the same. And when the first name state changes, the count does not change. So that is what I would say the state does not mingle. These two do not connect or affect each other. And so in the cases like this, when the state doesn't affect each other, uh, I think use state is a good use case and makes a lot of sense to use. But when you start getting to situations where when one state changes, it affects the other state, then it makes sense to think of other solutions. So what does that, what does that look like? So for example, this is the same exact example, but I've added a new constraint or new feature that I want. So now whenever I type right, my first name out, it's going to also increment the count. So now when I am on change, I'm now setting the first name and I'm also setting the count. And you can see this is a simple example, but if you had a larger state, you may be setting like five or 10 properties in a single action. And that just is pretty messy and doesn't make a lot of sense. And so this is where I would say the state is starting to mingle. So when an action is occurring, I'm not wanting to just set one state, I'm wanting to change multiple states or multiple values. So you may be thinking in situations like this, well, Ben, why don't you just make this into an object instead of just uh, splitting up the use states, right? So something like this. So you could do it where you say use state and you have an object and you have our account and our first name and an object. Um, and then here, I'm just destructuring it and it's the same old thing. But the way that uh, use state works is by default, it is different than set state where class components, they would merge um, stuff together, they do not merge the state together when you call set data. So what does that mean? Well, here I want to increment the count, right? Whenever I hit the plus button. And so you'll notice I don't just have the count incrementing. I also have this dot, 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 D. Um, and in this case is the rest of the data or the rest of the object. If I was calling set state in a class component, I wouldn't need to do this. Um, but in a use state hook, you need to do this. Now note, and this does also simplify this down here, by the way, um, but again, if you had other fields, you'd have to include dot, 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 D, or the rest of the fields in there, um, or else they would be undefined. So that is kind of the difference. And so in cases like this, you could also create a hook that merges it together, for example, but I found these are usually cases where um, the UI or the state logic can actually be simplified into a reducer and it makes a lot of sense for it. Now again, this is a simple example, but I've noticed when you know we get five or 10 state objects or state properties and they start intermingling and relying on each other, that that makes sense now switch it to a use reducer hook, which looks something like this. Um, so we say use reducer, we pass in a reducer function and we have an initial state. And again, this is similar to Redux where we have a reducer that has a state and an action, and then we change the state based on a, a type. 
or uh, actions that occur. So an increment occurs, we increment the count. When someone types something, we set the first name and increment the count. Right, so this is where I found that switching over to use reducer uh, makes a lot of sense and simplifies some things. And now we can just dispatch events uh, in our UI and have the logic for it in our reducer. And so that is kind of the gist of how I've been making a decision on whether to go with use state or use reducer is whether the state is affecting one another or whether they are independent. Now, the other thing that I wanted to mention is uh, one thing I've really enjoyed simplifying my reducer logic and my set state logic has been the emmer hooks. Um, and these are just ways for you to be able to mutate the state um, and updates will happen uh, even though the updates should be immutable. So emmer takes care of that for you. So that looks like this. You can say use emmer. This is just the readme example that they have. Uh, and then you can say update person and you can just set the name um, or increment the count and you don't have to create a new object or a new value for it. And they also have a use emmer reducer um, which is the same principle, you can mutate the state. Uh, so that has been super handy. Anyway, that is my take on use state and use reducer, and also take a look at use emmer, it is quite handy.